Welcome to the weekly video podcast for the PBS series E Squared. This exclusive online program will take you beyond the episode you just watched and deeper into the world of sustainable design. We're currently in the world at about 50% of the global population is urbanised and, and we're heading to a situation within the next 15 years or so where two-thirds of the world's population will be urbanised. So cities are really huge magnets to people and I think we can forget about saying we, we have to stop the growth of cities. Um, we have to manage that growth and we have to direct that population growth into the kind of forms that, that can be better serviced, more, more sustainably, with, with less use of resources, with less use of cars. And that in turn means that you actually have to focus much more on the public realm of cities, uh, not just the private realm. The process has been uh, with the automobile that the public realm has deteriorated very, very badly with the roads and the car parks and so on. The whole history of transportation planning has been to predict the amount of extra traffic growth based on a, an extrapolation of current trends and to, to say, well, in 20, 25 years, the city's going to need to have an extra so many lane miles of freeway and so much extra parking and so on. And what that has done is just led the city into a spiral downwards where you just get more and more traffic in response to the increase in the road space. If you look out the window, you see a congested street and therefore you would simply add another lane or build new roads. Now, that in theory uh, is possible in more dispersed areas, but certainly for urban territories, as long as we stick to a rather agreeable definition of what city and urban is, meaning a certain degree of public space, of public engagement, then we face serious challenges because simply we cannot expand the road infrastructure to infinite levels. The glue that keeps the city together is public space. And uh, you have a decision as a politician or as a designer as to what that public space is like. Either it becomes a sort of dignified experience that you walk out of your front door and you sort of look out and you feel this is wonderful to be part of society and stroll down the street, or you feel that public space is taken over by other things. The individual, the human scale, is taken over by eight-lane roads with fast-moving cars, where really you're better off going through an underpass and crossing the road rather than sort of being on the ground. Streets have traditionally been not for the movement of vehicles only. They have been social space. They've been places where people congregate, talk to one another, places where children play in the streets. I mean, the idea of children playing in the streets was with us only 40, 50 years ago. And uh, somewhere along the line, we, we changed all that. We gradually gave over the streets to, to the automobile and the street became a place of passage only, not a, not a place. And that is fundamentally wrong because streets occupy about 20 to 30 percent of the land in any metropolitan area. And if we just take that all away and say that's just a purely transportation function, then people have lost a major part of the public realm. Public space is not just there for only an aesthetic dimension of great importance to the city. It's also, from the social and economic point of view, essential. I mean, ultimately, public space is where transactions, interfaces between people happen. People congregate in cities to have community, to, to have this casual kind of interaction and support that, that help to make people thrive. That is what cities should be providing for people, quality of life outside the door. It's a focus on the public environments of cities. That is what is most lacking in urban development today and, and that which most sets apart those cities who do decide to actually do it. For more information about E Squared, visit our website at pbs.org. Thank you for watching this weekly podcast from the E Squared Transport Series. 
We're proud to bring you these stories about the engineers, designers, and architects who are using technology to help create a more sustainable world.